Hey, I'm Pastor Goodman, and this is the Drive to School podcast. Uh, we are talking about some of the things that you will see in church this Sunday, and it's Lent. It's Lent now, so all the colors turn purple. Some of the parts of the divine service are taken out as we start to reflect upon what it would be like if if we were left alone down here. And so uh, the, the Gloria is, is left alone, and, and heaven gets just a little bit farther away sounding, although the readings are still so full of hope that it actually, I think, cancels out. Uh, today we're going to be looking at uh, an Old Testament lesson that you might just maybe be hearing in church this Sunday, which is pretty familiar. It's the story of the fall. It is the story of Adam and Eve and a tree of knowledge of good and evil from which God had said, you shall not eat it lest you die and like a snake. Um, and really, it shouldn't have gone as well as it did because in the middle of a story that is all about blame and self-justification and evil and death, uh, we have a God who seeks out the lost, who seeks out the sinners, who seeks out the dying and insists that things be a different way. If you want to read this story about whose fault it is, whether or not it is Eve who ate fruit first um, or, or Adam who, who tricked her, uh, if you want to just sort of leave them laying in the, the bushes wearing fig leaves so that we can teach the story to children appropriately, you're going to miss the point in all of it. We would imagine a world without God. We would imagine a world without Christ. It's why we ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil in the first place, so that we wouldn't need him anymore, so that we could be like God. And as soon as we get just a little glimpse of this, we see what it looks like. Uh, Eve is confronted by death, and she copies from her husband. When God seeks out Adam and Eve hiding in the bushes, he says, Have you eaten of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, of which I have commanded you shall not eat of it? Like, he doesn't know. Um, and Adam does something pretty uh, pretty crafty. He blames he blames his wife. He, he throws her right under the bus. He says, Well, the woman who you gave to me, she gave me the fruit, and I ate. See, it's not my fault. It's it's hers. Punish her, which is evil upon evil, because it's his job as, as, as her husband to to protect her. It was his job uh, to, to teach her about this before it ever happened. It was his job to prevent the whole thing. And in all of it, he, if he could be God, would only see others condemned. And that's not going to work. And Eve learns from him because that's what she does. So when she is confronted by God, she says, well, the serpent tricked me and I ate. And if she were God, she would also condemn. And God insists instead only on hope and victory. He confronts Adam and Eve, hiding in the bushes, watching their marriage unravel. They can't even look at each other anymore but for leaves. And he says, there will be a child born of a woman who will crush the head of the serpent forever. It's going to hurt down here for a while. It's going to be a dangerous world because sin breaks stuff. That, that's what it does. But I will, I will send forth a redeemer. That redeemer, that child born of a woman who will crush the head of the serpent, is, it's Jesus. His heel is bruised upon the cross as a nail is driven through it, but he destroys the power of the devil by forgiving your sins, my sins, all of the sins of the world so the devil has no, nothing left to accuse us of. He offers hope that is not simply rooted in us trying better or finding an excuse or blaming each other, but he insists that not only we not, allow, not, not be allowed to be God, he insists on being a God to sinners. He sends forth his son into the world to save us. He clothes Adam and Eve in the skin of a lamb, a sacrificed animal that by uh, its death they would have have a, a, a reunion, that they would be able to look at each other again, that their marriage would be saved, and that they go out into a world that is now a scary place, but not alone, because ours is not a God who abandons us to the sins that we commit, but rather he seeks us out in the midst of them to offer hope, forgiveness, mercy, and forgiveness. It is the story of Lent. It is the story of a, a God who sees the things that we have done to each other, to ourselves, the things that we hide and the things that we blame other people for, and does not stand back, but comes into the world not simply to remind us to behave, to tell us to get along, and to give us a few helpful pointers along the way, but to bear the cross for you, for me, and for all the world. We have a God who seeks out sinners to save them. It was true in the garden, and it's true on the cross. So we go to church where we can receive that gift of forgiveness, and uh, we rejoice, even in the middle of Lent. <laughs>